information and updating us uh, with often underdiagnosed condition uh, which is autoimmune encephalitis i would request the audience if they have any queries they can write in the chat box so i don't see any queries uh, till now and because we have uh, less time in hand we move forward with our next uh, speaker uh, i welcome dr rajiv uh, a senior resident in the department of pediatrics to update us on current concepts in febrile seizure welcome dr rajiv over to you Uh, Dr. Rajiv, you are not audible. Can you unmute yourself? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ma'am, am I audible? Yes, you are audible, and uh, your screen is also visible. You can make it full screen. Uh, thank you, ma'am. And good afternoon. And I'm going to discuss the febrile seizure. Uh, why febrile seizure is important? Because this is the most common type of childhood seizure, and this is third most uh, most common type of neurological encountered by the pediatrician and pediatric neurologist. The incidence is five to ten percent in India, which is slightly higher in the Asian population as compared to U.S. population. Previously, febrile seizure was thought as a benign, but currently, fever-triggered genetic epilepsy, which had a variable long-term outcome, so nature of disease uh, need to be rethink. So, interesting point about uh, uh, febrile seizure is slightly male predominance, and basically, the majority of febrile seizure occur in the winter months and in the afternoon. But in Indian scenario, this uh, could not stabilize. 33% of patient have positive family history of febrile seizure and sibling had 20% of risk of developing febrile seizure and in monozygotic twins about 35 to 70% concordance rate and uh, in dizygotic twins it's 14 to 20%. So what is febrile seizure? Febrile seizure is any seizure with the fever which is uh, more than 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit according to ILE 2012 classification. An important thing is there should not be CNS infection, there should not be any metabolic cause, and there should not be any febrile seizure, and uh, like uh, other cause of seizure. Most common age group is six months to five year. Average age is three months to three year, and almost the first febrile seizure occur by age three year. So type of febrile seizures, the most common type of febrile seizure is simple febrile seizure, which occurs in seventy to seventy five percent. Which is usually generalized, lasting less than 15 minutes, and single episode in 24 hours, and no postictal neurodeficit is there. In complex febrile seizure, it's about 20 to 25 percent. It usually occur in focal, lasting more than 15 minutes, and recur in 24 hours, and prolonged recovery periods in complex febrile seizure. And febrile status epilepticus, like other status epilepticus, if febrile seizure is lasting more than 30 minutes. It's known as febrile status epilepticus and incidence is about 5%. So pathophysiology. The pathophysiology is, uh, of the febrile seizure is not understood, but uh, genetic susceptibility and environmental trigger along with the neurodevelopmental vulnerability in conjunction result in febrile seizure. So, if child is presenting to us with a fever and seizure, if our steps out, if his child is having uh, active seizure, though consider it as a status, they stabilize child, airway breathing circulation, give parietal benzodiazepine and anti-epileptic drugs. And if child is presenting to us with active seizure, the, we should treat like a status. And detailed history is also important for the, like other seizure, like semiology of seizure, duration, previous seizure, 
onset duration and spike of fever and focus of fever is very important lethargy irritability cry and oral acceptance in small children family history birth history development history and antibiotic use examination may we should look for the neurological insult like sign of raised icp of bulging anterior front nail meningeal sign and focal neurological deficit so if child is presenting with a fever and seizure so there are uh, with first episode there are three possibilities acute acute uh, symptomatic seizure that can be because of uh, cns infection or metabolic febrile seizure or first episode of fever triggered epilepsy so if child is presenting to us with febrile seizure what are the recommendation for the lumbar puncture in simple febrile seizure according to american academy of pediatrics uh, and the those child who are fully immunized lp is not recommended lp is performed in those child whose history and examination suggest of meningitis and those child who are not having the history of uh, immunization of hip or streptococcus pneumoniae and also those child having the dry seizure and had received the antibiotic therapy being being in a tertiary care center what we do we do lp in all cases below 6 month in children between 6 to 12 month consider doing lp if there is a sign of meningitis is present and child is presenting to altered sensorium more than 30 minute and immunization state unclear and if child had received antibiotic from some primary or secondary health care center complex febrile seizure febrile status epilepticus and history and examination and of fever is doubtful so observe about antibiotic for 12 hour if lp is not done for more than 12 12 month old clinical clinician discretion apply what is the blood investigation we should send currently currently for the simple febrile seizure <laughs> simple febrile seizure no blood investigation is recommended careful history and examination usually identify the cause however above investigation are required like cbc serum electrolytes calcium magnesium and glucose level is recommended in child or child presenting with a complex febrile seizure neuroimaging should we do neuroimaging in all children no the neuroimaging is not recommended in simple febrile seizure at institute we have three tesla protocol uh, three tesla mri is available in complex febrile seizure once acute phase is over we should order for the mri brain in prolonged and focal neuro uh, focal febrile seizure neuroimaging may show hippocampal edema and subsequent mesial temporal sclerosis this is going to uh, discuss in detail after few slides mri abnormality found in 14.8% of complex febrile seizure here you can see the hippocampal edema in this slide so whether we should do eeg or not the feb stat uh, study done in 2012 which shows baseline eeg within 72 hours of uh, episode focal slowing and attenuation what are the hippocampal injury on mri but eeg cannot predict the future development of epilepsy the reported incidence of eeg abnormality varies from 2 to 86% which is very uh, long duration epileptic discharge do not correlate with the recurrence or later development of epilepsy uh, febrile seizure presenting with the frontal paroxysmal eeg abnormality may be at high risk so what is the recommendation of apomegran academica pediatrics eeg should not be the part of routine evaluation in neurologically healthy child in simple febrile seizure and child with complex febrile seizure and child uh, with a neurological deficit we can order e so what is febrile status epilepticus like other status epilepticus is uh, febrile seizure last more than 30 minutes whether as a single episode or a series of seizures without full recovery in between seizure so febrile status epilepticus account for only 5% of febrile seizure febrile like status epilepticus in a previous healthy child does not increase reach, uh, risk of future epilepsy the management is same as any other uh, status hum lage raha sabse pehle mujhe meri lagi so this that study the common reported risk factor was younger age of the patient lower temperature and longer duration of the temperature recognition before the 
एबनॉर्मेलिटी hippo campal mall formation abnormality which is incomplete rotation of the hippocampus here this is the incomplete rotation of the hippocampus a surrounded shape and blurred intracranial structure again hippocampal edema and subsequent med, uh, mesial temporal sclerosis has observed after prolonged and focal febrile seizure most common abnormality observed was cortical focal hyperintensity abnormal white matter signal and folder cortical hyperdysplasia what is mesial temporal sclerosis mesial temporal sclerosis 40% of adults with intractable temporal lobe epilepsy give a history of complex febrile seizure if we if we uh, if you look for the retrospective study and 64% of patient of the hippocampal atrophy and mesial temporal sclerosis had no history of febrile seizures the most likely explanation for these both simple febrile seizure a complex febrile seizure and mesial temporal sclerosis have a shared genetic background which should be examined in the further studies so i am discussing some special situation vaccine related febrile seizure the vaccination is the second most common event associated with febrile seizure febrile seizure occurs most commonly 22 hours of immunization and within 7 to 14 days of life attenuated vaccine so which most most common implicated vaccine is mmr and dtp kindly kindly mute yourself is causing disturbance so please see your microphones and please put off them this galaxy s8 who has this galaxy s8 he has to mute himself child is have uh, presenting with a uh, febrile seizure after first episode of vaccination and having encephalopathy then we should look for the investigate for the etiology most of the patient have genetic uh, sodium channel mutation like dravet syndrome sodium channel 1a mutation one third of scn 1a uh, related epilepsy are triggered by the vaccine mmr dtp hemophilus influenzae and influenza vaccine so in dtp the acellular pertussis vaccine has one third of one third as compared to whole cell vaccine so what do you think if child is developing uh, febrile seizure after vaccination the likely cause is channelopathy so should be repeat vaccination yes we should repeat vaccination after 2 to 3 months we can give a repeat vaccination but no vaccine is contraindicated according to who and of american academy of pediatrics so i'm going to di di uh, discuss some fascinating terms like fires febrile infection related epilepsy syndrome most patient are between 3 to 15 years which is uncommon is for the febrile seizure that co most commonly that occur within 5 year of age very low uh, very low prevalence 1 into 1 uh, to 10 uh, 1 lakh seizure solely during febrile episode but they are quite explosive and prolonged mostly focal and beginning but later may be generalized learning and some motor difficulty may develop an eg may show background with ictal frontal and temporal epileptic form activity activities mri can be normal mri can show brain atrophy and temporal hyperintensity etiology is unclear and treatment is uh, ibig and ketogenic diet has been tried some other terms which we should know like aer or ps acute encephalitis with refractory repetitive partial seizure severe refractory status epilepticus due to presumed encephalitis idiopathic catastrophic epileptic encephalopathy nors new onset refractory status epilepticus devastating epileptic encephalopathy in school age children dsc these are the different terminology given by the different studies pfas aerps nors and dex what is a febrile febrile seizure this is newest terminology in the febrile seizure category 
appears to be distinct from the febrile seizure the seizure with minor infection like upper respiratory tract infection causing by uh, caused by influenza a or gi infection caused by rotaviral diarrhea but there is no fever the risk of subsequent epilepsy is much higher 7.5% so the one of the most common question asked by a parents is uh, will it recover will she have uh, developed epilepsy and some question is why it happened so the risk factor implicated for first febrile seizure is degree of fever high day care attendance pre existing developmental delay stay in the neonatal nursery for more than 28 hours various uh, viral infection is also implicated which we'll discuss in the further slide so will it recur so these are the risk factor for the first febrile seizure suppose child had first episode of febrile seizure so will it recover uh, sorry will it recur the most consistent risk factor reported for the recurrence is family history of febrile seizure and onset of first febrile seizure is less than 18 months of age definite risk factor of peak temperature higher the peak temperature lower the chance of recurrence the duration of fever prior to seizure shorter the duration of recognized fever the higher is the chance of recurrence and 30% chance of recurrence after first febrile seizure and if child is coming to with a second febrile seizure so chance of recurrence is 50% so minor this is the this is for the recurrence of the febrile seizure the minor risk factor is family history of epilepsy complex febrile seizures day care male gender low sodium at time of presentation seizure at the first sign of fever and fever first seizure lasted more than 10 minutes so in percentage if someone is asking like attendant is asking risk uh, in percentage so if child is having uh, if child is presenting with the first episode of simple febrile seizure the development of epilepsy is 1% if child is having recurrent febrile seizure charge chance of developing epilepsy is 4% and in neurodevelopmental abnormality is 33% because the neurogenic threshold is low for the neurodevelopmental child focal complex febrile seizure 29% and if history of epilepsy in the family so chances are 80% of developing epilepsy so infection triggered epilepsy infection triggered uh, febrile seizure the most common infection are viral like hhv6 influenza para influenza virus adenovirus rsv and rotavirus so what are the explanation of the seizure if child is having fever so he is having increased core body temperature which increases the neuro neuronal excitability which can lead to seizure if child is having fever because of fever child can have hyperventilation hyperventilation could lead alkalosis which again can cause excitability of neurons which lead to seizure and cytokine storm or cytokine interleukin 1 b can cause fever again by fever it can uh, increase core body temperature and neuronal excitation cytokine again can cause neurogen excitation so question is then why doesn't occur in all febrile seizure is child is having febrile seizure that should have a, a, a seizure so the explanation for this is genetic susceptibility the genetic susceptibility is not completely understood the genetic predisposition predisposition clear however mode of inheritance is still unclear the polygenic inheritance and autosomal dominant inheritance with the reduced penetration is problem mutation have been found in genetic uh, genes encoding sodium channel sc1 scn1a and b gaba a receptor so what are the antenatal risk factor antenatal risk factor for the developing febrile seizure is growth fetal growth retardation iugr child and second study done in the denmark it was a prospective cohort study and followed up the up to 2 years of age in second trimester ultrasound which showed low transfer cerebellar diameter was having febrile seizure third trimester ultrasound is child is having a growth retardation parameter like by uh, by parietal diameter and femoral length according to that if child is having iugr the chance of having febrile seizure is more and one cohort analysis in danish birth cohort analysis the child with low birth weight and short gestation age was also having more chance of febrile seizure so once child is having febrile seizure how will you counsel how will you manage 
the management is first is uh, will counsel parent and allay their anxiety because it's very frightening to witness a seizure then we have we should we should uh, make to manage acute event educate about mostly benign nature of disease current treatment no learning disability a recurrent epilepsy risk and contact detail of the medical services so that they can contact in case of any emergency treat the parent first we have to make we have to make them understand the cause of disease and management of the disease and management of acute event so will uh, make them learn the position of the child recovery position for the newborn child and recovery position for the pediatric child protect from fall or head injury loosen tight cloth near neck so that child uh, wouldn't lead like to hypoxic damage not to place anything in the mouth so that we could spread the uh, we could uh, prevent aspiration count the time if it's lasting for the more than 5 minutes benzodiazepine and then call doctor pharmacotherapy evaluation before 97 routinely treated uh, first febrile seizure was routinely treated with anti epileptic drugs but the benefit was less side effect was more and cost was also very more in next decades in 80s and 90s they started after recurrent febrile seizure the continuous aed and intermittent therapy in the past deca decades routine treatment with aed is rare so this is algorithm if child is having seizure if child is having seizure and uh, we have to ma uh, manage that seizure position rule out the cns infection we should find out the other cause of fever and if there is no recurrence the no treatment is recommended and of if child is having febrile seizure and few recurrences of simple or complex febrile seizure the home management home management of the seizure should be done and if child is having prolonged multiple recurrence of several risk factor for the recurrence less than one year age difficulty in the home seizure management and medical medical case close by severe parental anxiety then we should try intermittent benzodiazepine continuous severe uh, severe recurrence epilepsy low temperature low temperature at contact or short duration of fever then we should try for the continuous ad so who are the suitable candidate for the intermittent prophylaxis if child is having prolonged febrile seizure lasting for more than 15 minutes child with repeated febrile seizure two of the following risk factor like focal or repetitive seizure within 24 hours pre existing neurological abnormality and developmental delay family history of febrile seizure or epilepsy younger age less than 12 months seizure within 1 hour of onset of fever and seizures occurring with the body temperature less than 38 degree centigrade drug it for the intermittent prophylaxis clobazam 0.5 to 1 mg per kg during febrile period for a maximum 3 days and continuous prophylaxis is indicated when intermittent therapy has failed for continuous therapy drugs like phenobarbital and valproate has been tried and it's very good phenytoin has not been found uh, useful data regarding levetiracetam is not available only one study limited study has been done in uh, italian italian academy of uh, epilepsy against uh, recommend levetiracetam which is not sufficient data recurrent febrile seizure differential is recurrent febrile seizure fever triggered epilepsy and static encephalopathy with the fever triggered seizure and neurometabolic disorder so i'll be discussing only two recurrent febrile seizure and febrile triggered epilepsy fever triggered epilepsy is suspected when again persist after 5 years of age chances uh, change in semiology of seizure and duration lasting for more than 15 minutes and onset of a febrile seizure fever triggered epilepsy some channelopathy like gfs plus scn1 associated epilepsy syndrome scn2 a associated epilepsy syndrome so gfs is genetic epilepsy with febrile seizure plus ill defined category heterogeneous familial syndrome with a febrile seizure plus this is called febrile seizure plus because often occur after 6 year of age in addition to a variety of a febrile seizure type neuroimaging is normal eeg is not characteristic and in this intellectual is preserved 
type GFS plus type one, which is caused by channel opacity of SC one one B. GFS type two caused by SC one A, and GFS type three caused by GABA G two. So SC and one A, the most common mutation. FAT2 gene mutation, more than 300 mutation has been identified. In SC11A, the treatment concentration is AD that blocks sodium channel should be avoided, like limotrigine, phenytoin, and carbamazepine. So clinical spectrum of SC1A, the, the presentation is according to mutation severity. If child is having mild missense mutation, that can be only febrile seizure. If moderate to severe, so GEFS plus febrile seizure and generalized seizure. If child is having severe mutation and truncation, truncation means loss of function. So child can have severe myoclonic epilepsy of infant, febrile seizure, generalized seizure, myoclonic seizure, atypical seizure, ataxia and cognitive impairment. SC1, A1, channelopathy, again, GF1 type 2, Dravet syndrome, severe myoclonic epilepsy of infancy, do syndrome, myoclonic atonic epilepsy, Otahara syndrome, early infantile epileptic encephalopathy, ICE, GTCF, intractable childhood epilepsy, familial, uh, familial hemiplegic migraine type 2. All of these are implicated by SC1, 1A channelopathy. Se severe myoclonic epilepsy of uh, infancy is also known as Dravet syndrome. The onset between 2 to 10 months in otherwise normal infant characterized by febrile hemiconvulsion with the changing laterality, appearance of myoclonic epilepsy, absence of by one year, a febrile seizure by one or uh, two years, psychomotor retardation by one or two years of age, and seizure are mostly pharmacoresistant. Uh, in European Journal of Medical Genetics, in 2010, published a, a, a clinical scoring system for the Dravet syndrome, which is very sensitive. And this contains six point hemiconvulsion, prolonged seizure, onset of seizure, hot water induced seizure, and focal seizure, and myoclonic seizure. And each point, each uh, parameter has been given some points. If it's more than six, then sensitivity and specificity is very high. Again, Dravet syndrome is caused by SC1A mutation, which is most common, counting about 25%, 15% show partial or complete gene deletion, and rest 15% have SCN2A, SCN1B and TCDH19 mutation. MRI is normal, may develop hippocampal lesion later on. No characteristic EG signature in Dravet syndrome. Preferred ADs is clobazam, valproate, and steripentol. As ma'am has discussed, steripentol, this is quite new drug, got FD approval in uh, 21st of August in 2018. And injective treatment is topiramate, levetiracetam, and ketogenic diet. And how to diagnose genetic epilepsy? Genetic epilepsy is diagnosed by next gen, uh, gen generation sequencing, epileptic encephalopathy gene panel, and clinical exome sequencing. Yes. After genetic diagnosis, genetic epilepsy, we can conclude the definite diagnosis and we can prognosticate accurately. So one general of translation medicine 2013 published the Cardiff study, card carbon dioxide. The for the febrile seizure. In RAC model, provide evidence that febrile seizure may be triggered by the respiratory alkalosis. Individual therapeutic intervention was tried by uh, PCO2 elevation via the rebreathing or uh, inhalation of 5% carbon dioxide, which instantly stopped the febrile seizure. And in these patients, the randomized to receive uh, either carbogen, 5% carbon dioxide, plus 95% oxygen or placebo. This is an ongoing study, respiratory alkalosis in febrile seizure, use of carbogen, ongoing study in alternate to benzodiazepine in febrile seizure. So what is the take home message for uh, today's talk is only simple febrile seizure without risk factor have a favorable outcome and reassurance is the only required. Rule out meningitis if you are suspecting uh, meningitis. For simple febrile seizures, keep it simple. For simple febrile seizure, no EEG, no neuroimaging, no blood biochemistry, lumbar puncture, if you are strongly suspecting meningitis. Fever triggered epilepsy has a sinister prognosis and should be suspected in relevant scenario. SCN1A worsen with the phenytoin and carbamazepine, while SCN2A improve with the same.
थैंक यू थैंक यू मैम